federal grand jury has indicted five former Memphis police officers in the death of Tyree Nichols. Today, a U.S. District Court in Memphis charged all five with violating Nichols' civil rights. The indictment includes charges related to deprivation of rights under the color of law, excessive force, conspiracy to witness tampering, and obstruction of justice through witness tampering. The officers are also fighting state charges in the beating of Nichols during the January 7th traffic stop. Nichols was headed home at the time. He died three days later. In a landmark verdict, three former Memphis police officers were convicted in the brutal 2023 killing of Tyre Nichols. The decision, while celebrated for its partial justice, highlighted the systemic issues that continue to plague law enforcement in the United States. The officers, Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, and Justin Smith, faced a slew of charges, including civil rights violations and conspiracy. After deliberating for six hours, the jury returned a mixed verdict. The three officers were convicted of witness tampering for attempting to cover up the beating. However, in a decision that left many disheartened, Bean and Smith were acquitted of the civil rights violations they were accused of. The conviction was bittersweet for the Nichols family, as Tyre's tragic death had become a national symbol of police brutality. Yet the officers managed to evade the most severe charges. Nichols, a young black man, was brutally beaten just steps from his home, and footage of the incident sparked nationwide protests, reigniting calls for police reform. The officers could face up to 20 years in prison for the witness tampering charges, while Haley, who was convicted of violating Nichols' civil rights by causing bodily injury, faces an additional 10 years. Originally, the three had faced the possibility of life in prison. This case has become one of the most closely watched trials related to police violence in recent years. The Justice Department, through Assistant U.S. Attorney General Kristen Clark, expressed that while justice had been served, the ultimate goal was to prevent future tragedies like Nichols. Tyre Nichols should be alive today, Clark said. No one should have to face such violence, especially not at the hands of those meant to protect them. The Nichols family has vowed to continue their fight, as the officers still face state charges for second-degree murder. For Tyre's family and their supporters, the battle for accountability and reform is far from over. The events leading up to Tyre Nichols' death were horrifying. On January 7, 2023, Nichols was pulled over during what should have been a routine traffic stop. What happened next defied comprehension. After being pepper sprayed and hit with a taser, Nichols attempted to flee on foot. It was a decision that would ultimately cost him his life. The five officers involved, all part of the now disbanded Scorpion Crime Suppression Unit, chased Nichols into a nearby neighborhood. What followed was a savage beating captured on police body cameras, footage that would later incite public outrage. Nichols was not armed, nor was he a threat. The officers, however, used excessive force, punching and kicking Nichols repeatedly as he called out for his mother, who lived just blocks away. It was a brutal scene that shocked the conscience of the nation. Nichols would succumb to his injuries three days later, leaving behind a seven-year-old son. The autopsy revealed that Nichols died from blunt force trauma to the head, highlighting the extreme violence of the beating. In a bid to cover up their actions, the officers lied to their supervisors and medical personnel, downplaying the level of force they used on Nichols. The brutality of the case, coupled with the attempts at concealment, fueled public outrage and led to the officers' eventual dismissal from the Memphis Police Department. Nichols' death became a flashpoint for calls to defund or at least reform police departments across the country. Yet, despite the anger and the protests, Systemic change remains elusive. In addition to the criminal trials, the Justice Department launched investigations into the Memphis Police Department's practices. These inquiries aim to address the broader issues within the force, particularly regarding the use of force and discriminatory policing. In federal court, the testimonies of two officers who had previously pleaded guilty to their roles in Nichols' death were instrumental in securing the convictions. Desmond Mills, and Emmett Martin, once colleagues of Bean, Smith, and Haley, 
described how the Scorpion unit often engaged in violent practices that were far removed from proper policing. Mills, visibly emotional during his testimony, broke down as he apologized for his actions, expressing regret for leaving Nichols' young son fatherless. He admitted that he hoped the beating would blow over if Nichols had survived. Martin's testimony provided further damning evidence. He revealed that the officers had an unspoken agreement not to report each other's misconduct. Nichols, who was unarmed and helpless during the attack, was beaten without mercy, Martin explained. The testimony painted a picture of a unit that operated with impunity, willing to use violence as a first resort and protect each other through lies. Both Mills and Martin faced significant prison time, with Mills potentially serving up to 15 years and Martin facing up to 40 years. Their cooperation with prosecutors significantly strengthened the case against their former colleagues. The defense tried to shift the blame onto Mills and Martin, suggesting that they were the primary aggressors during the attack. However, the overwhelming evidence presented by the prosecution left little doubt about the involvement of all five officers in Nichols' death. Throughout the trial, Prosecutors repeatedly played the body camera footage of the beating, ensuring that jurors were reminded of the horror Nichols endured. Despite this, the jury acquitted Bean and Smith of the most serious charges. Tyre Nichols' family has been a central figure in the fight for justice. Rovon Wells, Nichols' mother, has spoken publicly about the pain of losing her son to such senseless violence. I still can't believe everything that has happened, Wells said after the verdict. The family's grief was compounded by the knowledge that Nichols had been so close to home when the fatal beating took place. His stepfather, Rodney Wells, expressed a mixture of relief and disappointment following the verdict. A win is a win, he told reporters, but we wanted them all held accountable. The Wells family filed a $550 million civil lawsuit against the city of Memphis and the Memphis Police Department holding them responsible for the systemic failures that allowed the Scorpion unit to operate with such impunity. Ben Crump, the family's attorney, has vowed to continue the fight for justice, both in the civil courts and through advocacy for broader police reform. In a joint statement with co-counsel Anthony Romanucci, Crump emphasized that the fight for Tyre Nichols is not just about one case, but about changing a system that has allowed too many similar tragedies to occur. The case has also garnered significant attention from activists and civil rights groups across the country. Pastor Earl Fisher, a longtime Memphis activist, has been vocal about the need for systemic change in the city's policing practices. This case has shown a light on what many of us have been saying for years, that there are deep, entrenched problems within the Memphis Police Department, Fisher stated. He expressed hope that the ongoing federal investigations would lead to meaningful reforms that could prevent future tragedies. The trials of Bean, Haley, and Smith are far from the end of the legal battle surrounding Nichols' death. The three officers, along with the two who pleaded guilty, still face state felony charges, including second-degree murder. While the federal convictions provide some measure of accountability, the Nichols family, and their legal team remain focused on securing convictions in the state trials as well. The upcoming hearings will likely draw even more public attention as the officers could face additional prison time if convicted on state charges. Beyond the individual trials, the U.S. Department of Justice has launched a broader investigation into the practices of the Memphis Police Department. This Patterns and Practices investigation will examine whether the department engages in excessive use of force, racially discriminatory policing, or other civil rights violations. The findings could lead to significant reforms within the department, particularly in how officers are trained and held accountable. The SCORE PION unit, which was intended to be a crime suppression force, has since been disbanded in the wake of Nichols' death. The unit had been criticized for its aggressive tactics long before the fatal beating, but Nichols' case brought those concerns to the forefront of national discourse. Memphis City officials have promised to review the policies and procedures of the police department, though many activists remain skeptical about the potential for real change. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this informational video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Crime Stories. 
Don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated on our upcoming cases. Thank <laughs> you.